Hey, all you colors out there, this is Nathan. Welcome back to another episode of Combo Coloring 101. Today we're looking at the color wheel and uh, different uh, color harmonies that we could accomplish with that uh, to get it, make it easier for us when we're picking color choices. Uh, so we have the basic color wheel here, which of course is made up of our primary colors, uh, yellow, red, and blue. And from those, when we mix those together, we'll get our secondary colors. So of course, yellow and red make orange, orange and blue make purple, and uh, blue and yellow make green. And from those, we mix the secondary colors with our primary colors, we get our tertiary colors. So we end up with the yellow orange, an orange red, a red violet, a violet blue, a blue green, and a green yellow. And from that, we can work out different uh, color harmonies. And there are six main ones. Uh, it's not to say this is the only way to make colors that look good together. Uh, I think we'll start off with analogous colors. And the analogous colors, where's my stylus? Oh, here we go. I could have sworn I had it here. Uh, let's see. So the analogous colors are going to be uh, colors that are adjacent to each other on the color wheel. Let me open up a new layer here so I can show you. So if we had a color scheme that was worked out with say these three colors or it could be you know these three colors or these three colors you know what have you all the way around the color wheel. So it's gonna be three colors you know next to each other. Uh, you know could be could be more than three as well it depends. Um, and I pulled aside a couple of examples. Uh, let's see, let me open these up. And uh, most of these here are by uh, Dave Stewart. So he's, a, he's a master of that stuff on uh, when he's working on Hellboy. So I'll pull this off to the side. And here we can see, you know, kind of have like this bluish green going on in here. We have, a, you know, blues and a little bit of purples going on as well. Um, he adds this little highlight here by kind of adding a little bit of uh, a little bit of reddish color desaturated over here. put the emphasis on here but for the most part you know we got an analogous color scheme going on uh, next one lobster Johnson and again you know he's using the reds over here you know and uh, kind of going over here with these guys you know oranges and uh, lighter colors of the oranges and a little bit of yellow thrown in for good measure so another uh, analogous color scheme and another uh, Lobster Johnson cover by Dave. And, um, you know, it may not look it, but this is like really uh, desaturated. And this is going to kind of go a little bit more towards the purples. So we're looking at, you know, the reds and more a little bit of violet desaturated uh, purple going on in here as well. And let's say if we just focus on, it's like Abe Sapien in here. It's like the, the whole page really isn't because we do have like these warmer uh, colors going on over here. But uh, if you look at Abe Sapien, you know, he has like the, the blues and greens, you know, let's going to put us like right over here in these uh, in these colors. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's analogous colors. Uh, next up, we'll look at uh, complementary colors, and those are going to be colors that are directly opposite each other on the color wheel. So let me get another layer going here and I'll show you. Let's see if we just had our yellow and purple. Fill that with black. So directly opposite from each other on the color wheel. Here you have that yellow orange and the uh, violet blue right across from each other. Or even like the uh, green and red right here. So those are complementary colors. You never want to have 50% uh, of each color because it's going to look uh, pretty shocking on the eyes. So what you want to do, you all want to have like mainly a green color scheme and throw in some red for accents or maybe a, a red color scheme with green accents or, you know, or whatever uh, colors you pick. And let's look at some uh, choices from that. Let me open these up. So again, more uh, more Dave Stewart. The guy knows what he's doing. 
So we have our reds over here, uh, a little bit of orangish, orangish red, and then with the uh, bluish green going on directly opposite from each other. Let me see if I can illustrate that for you guys. Yeah, that'll work. So right there is the colors we got going on for the most part in this piece. And then uh, another Dave Stewart piece. And we're looking at yellows and purples right here. And then uh, this Matt Hollingsworth, I believe, on Hawkeye, doing an amazing job on that book. And, uh, you know, there you go, yellows and purples for the most part. Maybe you can even kind of go, you know, with the orange and, uh, and uh, uh, violet, violet blue. Probably be truer for that one. Um, and from Guru FX, my good buddies back in San Antonio. Going with the uh, green and reds. Should I could see what I was talking about. You don't have 50% of one color and then another color. You know, you see that all the backgrounds are going to be green and a little bit of red to help make it make them pop out more. Add some accents and whatnot. It looks really good. Uh, next up, um, monochromatic, which is pretty simple. I didn't pull up uh, too many too many of those, and and of course, monochromatic is going to be different shades of just one color. And let's look at uh, examples of those. So here we go. Um, it's a great way to to uh, achieve like a metro or sorry a retro look. And, uh, you know, great for flashbacks and everything. Um, so there's this piece. And then uh, we have a piece by Jordi Barlair from her, uh, Manhattan Projects. And works really well for this book because uh, it's taking place in two different dimensions. So we have, like, the blue side and the red side. Helps helps keep things separate. So if you have, like, the everything monochromatic and red, you know which universe you're in. Uh, really helps the story uh, not be too confusing. Uh, but yeah, good examples of monochromatic work. Uh, next up, split complementary. Let me show you how that looks on the color wheel. So kind of similar to to complementary colors, except for instead of going to purple, one side splits. So it'll be here. So it'll be both the colors on the other side of that complementary color. So there we go. That's that's how it looks. Sorry for the messy selections and whatnot. Oops. I just did that right on top of my color wheel. Let me get a new layer. There we go. Now I can turn it. So you can see how those are going to look. So let me open up some examples that we got going on. Uh, this one here is pretty common uh, as far as comic book coloring, but one thing I want to emphasize to you guys, it's not all just comic books. Um, this stuff works great. Uh, if you go to a museum, look at the paintings. This is These are uh, harmonies that masters have been using throughout, <laughs> throughout time pretty much. Uh, video games, uh, you know, have like the same techniques. And, uh, oops, just open that. In the wrong program let me do this open with Photoshop so I have some here that are from uh, video games as well these are from Diablo 3 um, so you can see let me pull this up uh, so we can see the uh, color harmonies that they're using on here so we have like the uh, uh, greenish blue color right as the main color but then we also have the uh, uh, the color from the blast going on as well. Let's see if you guys can see that. Oops. Or we can go this way, where we have the orange from the blast, and we have the green, but then also showing off her her a uh, little bit of purple thrown in there for good measure. So that's a good example. Um, another good one. See if I can remember which way this one went. It was with the 
There we go. So we have the purple and we have a little bit of blue back over here as well. And then we got the orange from the fire going on really sets a nice mood for it. And thing to remember as well, just like with the complementary colors, we don't want to have 50-50 of that. And for split complementary, we don't want to do 33%, 33%, 33%. You want to break it up. Uh, you know, use use one as the main color and the other ones as kind of accents. Um, this is a piece from, by Chris Leitner for Ultimates 3. And it's pretty pretty basic here. So we have the oranges in the backgrounds, and then we have the, the blue greens, a little bit of purple here in the in the highlights on the skin tones, and a little bit in the shadows as well to help break things up a little bit. And you can see a little bit of the purple here in the background too. Um, and spawn, of course. We have his colors. We go from I'm trying to remember which one. It went. There it goes. So we have the purples in here. We have the reds and we have the green background. Kind of splits it up very nicely. And this is a nicely done cover. I think by uh, Brian Haviland did the colors on this. Another guy that's great with uh, with colors. I'm trying to remember how this one went. Next I had Yeah, I think, I think that was the one I had in mind. Sorry, kind of getting a little bit loopy, a little tired, uh, a little late here for me. So we have the uh, the reds in the cape, of course, and then the oranges up here, a little bit down here with the glows going on, and then this uh, bluish green added in here to help frame spawn it. Oops. So again, we can see, you know, the green is just an accent tone. You know where the main colors are going to be like the red on the cape and the orange in the background. Another uh, piece by Matt Hollingsworth on Hawkeye. It's going to go with the a little bit of you know with the purples and the oranges and yellows going on. Um, yeah, so that's the uh, split complementary for you guys. Uh, next up is the tetradic and. Uh, Tetradic is also known as the uh, double complementary. So we'll not only have one complement where it goes from one side to the other. Like that. We'll also have another. It doesn't have to be evenly spaced on the color wheel or anything like that. but it'll have two of them opposite against each other, something like that. And let's see, I pulled these guys aside as examples to show you. So here's a Spider-Man piece that I had colored and let me show you how that was done. So we have this bluish green right here and then we have the orangish red on Spidey but then we have, oops, we also have this violet color here with the uh, with this orangish lighting. So we could see here's like one complementary right here. Here's one complementary right here. We've got the blues, you know, coming in here on uh, Spidey and then in the sky as well. And then the orange from the lighting coming up from above. And then the bluish green from the sky in the background, and the, and the orangish reds on his uh, on his outfit there. And one of my favorite uh, droopy cartoons is the uh, Deputy Droopy. Uh, cartoons are great for for looking at the color schemes a lot as well. Um, so let's break this one down. So we have this violet color here with the oranges in the background. We also have a little bit of the yellow from his uh, neckerchief and like a little bit in the sky as well with more of this purplish color. 
so you can see that. So one complementary right here, there's a, the other complementary. And this one here was a little bit tricky to classify, but uh, we can see here's like the the greens, you know, coming in here from the plants and everything. And then a nicely desaturated red on the signs and on the monk. So we have that. Then we also have a bit of the uh, bit of the blues going on right here. Uh, some oranges. So here's like the blues introduced down here and over here, and then the uh, oranges here from the from the flames. So let me fill that in so you can see. And again, they don't have to be next to each other or across from each other. Anywhere you have two complementary colors. Uh, that'll be your tetradic, or we can call a double complementary, is another name that it's known by. Okay, we got that one. Let's look at triadic is next, and the last one that we'll be looking at. And um, triadic is going to be three colors, and they're going to be equally distant from each other on the color wheel. So let's take a look at that. So here's, let's pick that one. Let me go to this one. And then, let me see, I think that works out. So yeah, we have three colors here in between, three colors here in between, three colors. Okay. Just want to make sure I got that right and didn't, uh, didn't fool you guys. So these would be like our different color combinations to choose from for a tetradic. All right, so let's uh, let's pull up some examples and take a look. Let's look at uh, here's a shot from Sleeping Beauty, um, which one of my favorite uh, Disney cartoons. Um, not only for the background work, but like the color work as well. If you haven't, after we're done going through the color wheel, I, I go look at it again. <laughs> it's just amazing uh, how it's done, like in in colors. Uh, the story is told so well through the color work. Um, you know, it starts off really nice and vibrant colors, and then after the uh, Princess Alara is uh, is put to sleep then everything is like real dark and somber and everything and the story just progresses and you can tell which scene you're at if you just squint your eyes and look at the color choices that they pick and then it gets really bright and vibrant again when the during the dragon fight so so here we go right here um so we could look at i actually had it picked uh we got the greens and the flames and we have the the violets here and we got the oranges uh, going on in the flames. I guess the oranges would be like maybe a little bit more over here, but but you can see how uh, how that works too. How that works out. Uh, yeah, beautiful beautiful work on Sleeping Beauty. Um, on Velvet, this is uh, Elizabeth Brightweiser, I believe is her name. Her work is just astounding me lately. Uh, not only on Velvet, but she took over the coloring duties on. Um, on Fatal and that book, ugh, just beautiful work. Um, I think I might have put this one here in the wrong folder. Let me see if I could put this in uh, in a sense here. Yeah, I think it's just in the wrong folder. <laughs> uh, but a beautiful, beautiful sense of uh, of colors. I mean, you got like the the blues and you got like the reds. Uh, popping in as accents. Uh, yeah, I'd have to go back and rethink how to, how to categorize it. Uh, this one as well. I think I was in the wrong folder as well. But we have like some some gorgeous reds, and uh, looks like a, a desaturated greenish blue as well. So yeah, it doesn't really it doesn't really fit with the tetradic, but. My bad. Um, we'll carry on. <laughs> it's 
So here we got uh, the Spawn number one cover uh, painted by Ken Stacy. Um, so we have like the purples um, or the uh, blue, violet, blue, uh, green, yellow, and uh, red, orange going on in here. So it's, that was fairly simple to do. Okay, now um, Looney Tunes. Again, another another great source of uh, of looking at colors. And uh, again, once you start studying colors and everything, you'll just start seeing these patterns everywhere you look. Uh, it gets pretty crazy. Uh, I'm talking all the time uh, with my wife about uh, colors. Like, oh my god, look at that color combination! And she's just like, shut up. <laughs> it gets pretty crazy. Uh, so here. Let me see which one did I have in mind here. I guess it was more like this. I guess this is a more of a uh, uh, other green, but I mean it's close enough, I think. Um, so we have like this uh, pinkish um, uh, color here. We have the green, and then like this uh, yellow orange that pops out, uh, making it pretty close to a a, a triadic uh, color scheme. And this piece, uh, Battle Chasers number six cover, uh, colored by Liquid. Um, this one here is again using, let's see which one did I set aside here. Is that it? No. I guess that's as close as we're gonna get. We have like the blue greens. And then uh, orange and reds. Uh, yellows and, or and reds going on in the background here. I think I had this one set up as maybe a double complementary actually. Let's take a look. So we have the reds going on, right? Or is this one the... Uh... Yeah, this is the uh, tetradic. So we have this going on here, right? And then we have some blues. Yeah, okay. That's what it was supposed to be. Was the tetradic or the or the or the split complementary? I'll put a blue layer. There we go. That's what it was supposed to be. So we have the blues and and the the tealish green going on here, and then the oranges and the and the reds. So yeah, my bad on that one too, guys. <laughs> Sorry, just kind of getting back into the video stuff uh, after taking a break last week. Um, but yeah, and that'll give you some some ideas. Um, there's some websites out there as well. Um, one that I like to use. Oops, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Let's see, is it still around? Ah, yes it is. Okay, let me bring this over so you guys can check it out. There's a website, cooler.adobe.com. This is a great tool. Uh, picking color choices, mainly used for like websites and um, uh, design work and that type of stuff, but we can do, you can do some really cool stuff with it. Uh, picking monochromatic colors, uh, uh, triadic colors, complementary colors uh, works really well. But you know you can move this stuff around. You can even pick uh, your own colors uh, to go in here. You can mess around with the sliders and whatnot. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a really neat, uh, really neat tool to mess around with uh, when you're setting up different color schemes. Um, but I think that's going to do it for this episode. Um, let's see, is there anything else? No, I think, <laughs> I think that's about it for this one. Sorry, I'm still all over the place. Um, but yeah, if you, uh, like what you see, hit the like button. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. For those who have, I greatly appreciate it. And, um, next week we'll get more into, we're going to think we'll do an episode where we're kind of merging the, 
the stuff we're learning here in the, in the uh, combo coloring 101 and then with the advanced color techniques we'll get more into uh, picking colors and uh, yeah so I have, look forward to that next week and um, let's see updates I finally got a Facebook fan page it's uh, facebook.com slash lummage1 I'll put the link in the description and uh, check out more of my work uh, you can check out uh, deviantart uh, lummage.deviantart.com and again I'll put that link in the description as well and yeah that'll do it for this week and we'll see you guys soon and thanks for watching all right bye